Gonley, founder and artistic director of Chicago Tap Theater, back with a new episode of the Tea on Tap. Please enjoy our new theme song, sung by Jason J.C. Brooks. Lace your shoes, don't change for left, mark your the least got the tea on tap. See to be square is where it's at, my love. Nobody near us to see us or hear us, no friends or relations, a weekend vacation. We won't have the no near the we own a telephone. Today, we are so excited to have the Jason Janis with us live. Uh, those of you that have been tap dancers for the past 20 years, no doubt know this man. He is truly one of the greats, and he is, he'll be on here in about 10 seconds, maybe even less. Hey! What's going on? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Chilling. Chilling. Yeah. Right on, right on. Yeah. How are you, sir? You got here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Um, I thought I... Let I'd me see your mug. Give the husband mug today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. What are you drinking? Uh, Actually, just some coffee with a little bit of almond milk. Nice. Me too. In there. Yeah. Nice. My wife asked me, she's like, so what, Um, you know, mug and... And then she paused, and I was like, I think I know this answer. I said, I'm going to use the husband mug. I cut a, I wanted to use the Lion King mug. Raf <laughs> I love Rafiki. I got a Rafiki mug, but I, I think it. she wanted me to say, you know. So. <laughs> so I always start by saying, do you mind giving us a look at, tell everybody where, oh, yeah. we, where you are, and then where give us a I, look at Yeah, where am I living room of my house the first house i've ever had so i'm very proud of it we we've finished every floor repainted every wall replaced every window it took like almost a year to move in it but we're in my living room and um this is like there's the room back here where i dance you'll see, we'll be there in a in a little bit but this is like just the where I chill. I'm just sitting on this couch over here. Chilling. Yeah. So, and then, uh, that's just my outside, right? Oh, wait, I gotta turn it around. Sorry. That's just my front road thing, whatever. Nice. So, yeah, I live in Dearborn, about 15 minutes outside of Detroit. Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. Man, Michigan is uh, really, I mean, it's always had a great tap tradition, but, you know, with you being Michigan now, and uh, you probably saw that Heather Cornell is joining the faculty at Hope yeah, College. Yeah, I talked to her. She says she's going to be moving out here, and, yeah. and then we got Flint with, you know, Bruce and mm -hmm. Tapology, Bruce Bradley, which is amazing, and yeah. um, I, there's also, uh, yeah, there's the Motor City I think Tap Festival is here. No. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. I got Hoof and Ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll get there later, but yeah. Oh, you yeah, Detroit's cool, gonna... man. There's a lot of history here. Obviously, Charlie Atkins, mm -hmm. you know, he was big here. He was Motown. And, oh, yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. So tell us, what was your first experience that you remember with tap dance, either as a viewer or a participant? My mom was uh, involved. She was she's a tap dancer now. Even with two artificial knees, she just wrote hello. My mom, she was uh, hey, mom. always involved, like around the Rockettes, and she was always dancing. She was always teaching. They had her teaching at a at a public school. I remember driving with her, and they would teach on cement floors and all that stuff. That's why her knees are you know artificial. But she did it all the time, and I never. I didn't do it then too much, but I I knew I liked it, and I knew it was a challenge. And um, I trained with my mom for a few years, and she gave me a really solid basis, you know. But my first experience was watching my mom. And then my first experience um, taking a class, like a class where I was like, whoa, um, Deborah Mitchell. Mm. 
that was an audition for NJTE, my first audition. So that was um, Leonard Oxley was on piano. He played for Black and Blue, and Deborah mm -hmm. Mitchell was teaching me an audition to T for Two. I was 12 years old, and I had no idea what I was doing, man. I I got all upset, and I apologized for wasting her time. Oh. I remember. Yeah, man. I well, did. That's I, sweet. Oh. Um, my, I, yeah. So, yeah, uh, my mom was is involved, and that's how I I got involved. But then she introduced me to Deborah, Deborah mm -hmm. Mitchell, and that's when I got really into rhythm tap um, and just tap dance in general, man, just the uh, everything. So, really, I have Deborah to, you know, my first experience. You are the second guest we've had to talk about her and the New Jersey Tap Ensemble. Um, and it sounds, I have to admit, I, I've obviously known about it for many years. Mm -hmm. um, but when I think about the people who came out of that program, uh, mm -hmm. it seems like it really is quite, it must be quite a sense of, quite a training that happens there. Because it seems like people leave and they really know what they're doing. And quite a few mm -hmm. people leave and have professional careers. Well, to this day, me and Deborah are very close. I have a, so much respect and love for her because the way she teaches is kind of like college. You know, she gives you the material. She shows you how much she loves it. And she shows you the example. And then it's kind of on you. And then if you don't, then that's okay. You know, like, we still love you, but you're not going to be in this piece. You know, and it was kind of just that cut and dry and uh but it was always nice <laughs> like it was never she was never upset she never took it you know personal she's just um very loving you know i i remember w when i would rush you know and i get nervous and i rush she'd just come and grab my hand until i slowed down she was just like would you calm down you know and it was that kind of energy i think that stays with you you know and i can see all the dancers who I haven't seen in years, every time I see them, we there's this kind of energy that you all have because you know that you were around Deborah and she gave mm -hmm. that. She just gave that energy. Like her and my father and and my mom are still very close. Like and I'm you know, she's just that kind of lady, you know. She's one of the greats. Mm, that is that's really cool to hear. So you know, one of the things that I always ask is if there's anything that a mentor or teacher said to you at some point that has really stuck with you and that you find yourself returning to uh, or that you say to your own students now or that you say to yourself before you go on stage. Yeah, um, I think a few of them said, said it. Um, but I know Diane Walker, she... But she's not the only one. But in her way, she said, the one's your best friend. Like, even if your best friend is in Japan, you probably know, like, your best friend's in Japan. Like, you kind of, even if you're not sure exactly, like, but you know usually where your best friend is. And so treat that like that. So I've always looked at the one is very friendly. Yeah. You know, uh, that's a big thing that stuck with me. The one is your best friend. Mm. Mm, I love that. So what made you fall in love with tap dance? What, you know, what element or what part of it? Like, what was that? Tell us about the uh, courtship of you and tap dance. Um, well, I love the hard work and the focus and the work ethic that goes into it. You know, I really appreciate that. I respect hard work. And, and, I, and all of us know that you have to work super hard consistently you know it's like brushing your teeth you can't just brush your teeth good when you're 10 11 and then chill when you're 18 and 19 like you got to do it right every day if you want to have good teeth and 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 i i appreciate that so i love that about it i love the athleticness i love um obviously the musicality side but i think what made me fall in love with tap dance is the friendships and the camaraderie and just the bros and the just the family you get that, I mean, 
I feel honored to have so many friends who yeah. are so incredibly talented. And in tap dance is the reason that I even met some many of my friends. You too, yeah. you know. I mean, I would. You, you're from Portland, right? You're from Kansas City, originally? but you're right. Oh. That I, I started going to the Portland Tap Festival. Which oh, is okay. Where Sorry. I fell in love with the broader tap world. But I'm saying, like, we would have, you know, I met you in Austin, Texas, because I was doing a tap company, and you came out for a festival. Like, you know, that kind of stuff is what made me, and still makes me, love it so much. Is, um, you know, I can wake up and talk to people who who tap dance, but who I love, not just because they tap dance. You know, um, I think that side of it is awesome. You know. Agreed. It's it's one hell of a family, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, Jason, I would say that uh, among the many things you're known for, that I would say people often comment on the fact that you're one of the true technicians in our field. Um, and one of the questions I always ask people about is technique, because technique, I feel like, in ballet and modern are pretty well defined, and often they're defined by a, a certain figure, Right. Um, right. or a style or history. And yet in tap dance, I think technique can be a broader word or a word we tend to define for ourselves. And as teachers, we define it for our students. So what does technique mean to you? Well, um, I think what I was taught is like, and what I think is language, you know, it, steps are kind of like words in a sense that there's only so many words. So like in a language, and then it's just how you say these words. That's how you have a conversation. That's how you tell the story. So to me, having good technique is using your voice, what works for you, but being clear and defined and, and being able to say the words you need to say to say what you want to say. So for me to say to a kid, like, you know, because I have a little studio out here in Michigan, and I say to a kid, like, you you shouldn't do like a wing like that. I kind of stopped doing that because when I was in math and I couldn't figure out a problem unless I wrote it out and they said, you can't do that. I was like, why? I'm getting the answer. I just don't want to do it like that. So, you know, I think helping a kid figure out how to do it correctly is essential. But I feel like everybody might say it differently. And as long as, just like everybody might sing differently, um, as long as the words get said and the message is there, I, th you know, I think that's clean technique. I think for me, obviously Deborah, um, you know, I've had influence from Gene, I've had influence from AC and Derek, obviously a lot. Um, I just think technique is um, how much you work on it, too. You know, you can have the best technical teacher, but you know it took you hours just to get something so small. Um, I think good technique is consistent with good work ethic, you know, and just wanting to say what you want to say. Because if you can't, you know, I don't talk very good. Like, so for, for me to have an interview, like I may have a lot of pauses because I stutter, I, ha I have my whole life. So, you know, I understand not being able to say what you want to say and it's frustrating. So mm. that's why I wanted to get my feet super clean in mm. a sense for me, just so I can say something without feeling. But it kind of helped my improv in a sense that I got to have two or three words available i was going to say ready but i was going to stutter so i said available at any time so i don't sound weird i was going to huh. say like an idiot but i was going to stutter so i said weird you see so so as i'm talking i just have to have other words available not smart words like i'm you know i'm not like just always thinking and i think dancing that's how i look at having good technique but I want you to keep your weight in the balls of your feet when you need to. And and I want you to 
have like strong have a strong have a strong basis just like you have a strong voice and a strong accent of how you speak you know we talk differently yeah. but we say the same language and we can communicate and um so yeah i agree with you there's no really word there's not too many terms for technique like in cunningham or horton for for modern or right or chiquetti for yeah, ballet yeah yeah i mean i know sam of course you know sam yeah. everybody had their sam moment i have my sam <laughs> moment where i just my head was gonna explode i'm sitting in the room with him and he's just like come on jason i'm like no sam there's no coming on i i <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going it, to, I'm leaving. Yeah. I got, yeah. It always, you know, I've been, I've taken from Sam since I was 14. So going on three decades now. And it wow. always cracks me up how Sam. Because your despite, technique is like, your feet are clean, bro. Like, Oh, well, thank you. That's incredibly man. kind of you to say. Nah. I'm definitely a loose ankle fanatic. That's you, sure. Yeah, but you've Thank been you. working on that ever since, I mean, probably way before I met you, but you're consistent Aww. with your flavor. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. I try really hard. Yeah, Thank no you. Doubt. That is kind, man. Thank you. No doubt. It always makes me crack up. Sam can never, like, he's always, his mind is blown that people don't get what he's teaching right away. It always <laughs> amazes me how he, he just doesn't, seem to understand that what is so logical and easy for him that for most of us you know there are there are little epiphanies everything and they're little brain busters so often yeah uh, i think he uh, uh i think sometimes he i'm like saying you know what i'm saying and he's like hmm? i do know I'm what like, you're come saying on, man i'm like you know what i'm talking about like, <laughs> i'm like quit playing like <laughs> and he has that look so, like no. <laughs> no, go ahead, please. I love it. No, he has that look. Like, no, I, I, I no, like he's like oblivious in my head. I'm like, <laughs> are you right? No, I know. Yeah, he's a, he's he's a genius, though. He is. He's also one of the funniest teachers. He's one of those teachers that I feel like if you're on his wavelength in his class, you will laugh your your butt off. But you look around and everyone is so scared. <laughs> it's his audience. I've seen a man teach in some places, and he's a hit. And then I see him teach in some places, and it's crickets. And I'm like, yeah, I'm laughing inside, but I'm like, yo, they don't get it. It's over their heads. <laughs> yes. It's the so, age. I think sometimes he has some youngsters, and he just, <laughs> they don't, youngsters, I yes. think sometimes. Young kids, I think, yeah. Right? You know, Jason, one of the funniest things I ever did was, uh, you know, you and I have both done Tap University from our Goodman. And uh, I was doing that gig one time and Sam was on faculty and Sam had, Sam was asked to teach a 45 minute class to like six year olds. So, and I was off that class. As you know, if I'm off, I take, I took from you at Tap University. It was an amazing class. I loved it. So okay. I asked Sam, I was like, Sam, do you mind if I like sit in? Cause I really want to see how you teach six year olds. It was remarkable. It was what amazing. Did he do? I really wish they'd bring his camera. drum out. You know, he didn't, but he, um, I mean, we did shuffles and we did shuffle steps. And I mean, it was very much Sam Weber, but he really understood how to kind of bring it down to the six-year-old level. That's cool. um, the, only, the thing that was great is, you know, he was not going to dumb down his vocabulary for the six-year-old. <laughs> he wasn't going to change, like, what he wanted them to do. He you was better be an encyclopedia. <laughs> you better... <laughs> He'll be like, now you're a piriformis muscle. He's so funny. So this is a perfect um, transition. You know, I've, I've asked every single guest I've had if they've ever had to deal with a major injury or mm. setback. Mm. Because I think it's so important for the people that watch this show um, to realize that even the greats that they look up to and admire have had their problems, have had their difficulties. And yet, here they are tap dancing very often at the best they've tapped in their entire lives. Um, do you have any kind of stories that you would mind sharing with us? Yeah, um, I come from, you know, I grew up playing soccer. Um, mm -hmm. I was really good at soccer too. I loved it. Um, and I was always taught from my coach who was from Portugal. He would say like, yo, if you have an injury, like wear two braces. So nobody knows like which side it's on. Because if they know, 
then they're going to, you know, favor that side, then you're at a disadvantage. This way, they're not sure. Maybe they'll undervalue, uh, underestimate you and think that you're both injured, but then only one side is, so you might have an advantage back. So who knows, right? So that's not the same, but that's my philosophy. So, you know, some injuries, like some athletes and dancers, they make it public and they want to show the recovery. Um, I, I've always been kind of opposite, you know, even if I am injured, like I try not to show it or um, let everybody know too much at the time because, you know, I just don't want somebody to be like, oh, he missed the sound because of this. I, you know, I don't want to make excuses for myself. So I, I don't know. I just – but there's, there was a time where um, I was at the Barcelona Tap Festival. Um, it's a great city. Hard festival, though, like four or five classes in a row, five days a week, like just hot, sweaty. Like it's at Luthier. It's a beautiful studio, but hard festival. My back goes out, you know, so bad that I can't even tie my shoes. I can't even look over my shoulder. I can't even. I need help putting a shirt on. And uh, I couldn't hide that from everybody. Like people kind of knew. So I had to get a lot of um, acupuncture and stuff just to make it through the week. Um, as far as a long-term injury, uh, just my left ankle about five years ago. Um, just thought I was young still, trying to do like a roll, ankle roll type thing. And uh, just it felt really, really loose in my you know, Achilles area for a while. I didn't rip anything, but hasn't really come back like it was. I don't think it ever will. But, um, you know, you just have to work on different technique and you and you kind of learn that you don't need to say certain things at all, ever, with your feet, ever again. Like, I don't need to do that ever. <laughs> I was like, why was I even trying that step? Like, why would I? But, it, and I felt it. So, for, and, and that scared me a lot, not being able to, like, again, say what I want to say with my feet. Hey, Aunt yeah. Di. Aunt Di is here. She's saying hi. I know. Isn't that cool? Yeah, hey, yeah, good yeah. to see you. She, uh, I've been working on make, getting her as a guest on the Tea on Tap, and so far mm -hmm. I have been unsuccessful. Uh, but I'm hoping she is She is one of my <laughs> dream guests for this show. So oh, no yeah. pressure. She's, she's the best. She's the best. <laughs> she is the best. Yeah, so I had that kind of injury with my ankle um, and my back a few times, and uh, – you know, um, but you know, my knees, when I got up to my 30s, I was still young. I'm just trying not to let my, my body know I was 30, you know, still trying to work out every day. I still work every day. When I reached 35, uh, I could feel it in my knees some. Um, and um, so I started taking this, um, a lot of fish oils, a lot of different kind of oils and fish mm -hmm. oils and do you find them helping? Yeah, I nice. do. I do. Okay. I do. I take a lot of them. It's a lot. You know, they're pretty expensive for me, but it's worth it. I take a lot of them, and I just stretch a lot and drink as much water as I can, and I feel like that helped. And I stopped doing dairy, and that kind of helped with my knees a little bit. Nice. Too. Yeah. One of the things I'm interested in, you know, yeah. I, I feel like in, in tap dance, there's a, there's a few stories that we tell every time we dance. I think one of the stories we tell is our lineage, right? We, we, we reflect our teachers, of um, our mentors, people that we admire. And then I think one of the things we reflect to is regionality, where we're from. Um, I think New Jersey is quite famous for being a place that a lot of great tap dancers come out of. And I would also argue that New Jersey, especially in the mid nineties, definitely had a style that was associated with it. Um, I'd love, could you talk a little bit? Do you think that there was in fact kind of a New Jersey style or approach? Um, or um, more generally, how does geography shape us as, to, as tap dancers? Well, I think nowadays is not as um, obvious. Because, like you said, you know, we teach all over the country sometimes, like, you know, so a lot of kids get to see different things. I'm sure growing up, for me, I know, you know, I, like I said, I have my mom and Deborah, and that was about it. Like, I'm not, there wasn't other, you know, so that was my influence. So, of course, my flavor was that. But then, you know, um, 
there was a whole area like the late nineties, like with um, bringing the noise, bringing the funk that inspired like everybody. And that was being in Northern Jersey in that area, like, man, that was a big inspiration. Um, man, ah, it was awesome, you know, like, but I don't know if there's a flavor from New Jersey. I, I mean, maybe, but I just feel like, um, I feel like what, the first time I saw somebody dance from Chicago, I was like, whoa. First time I saw somebody dance from, you know, LA, I was like, whoa. Like when I met Christopher Broad and I was like, whoa. When I met Jumani, I was like, what is going on? Because you didn't see them all the time. It wasn't like internet and stuff. So it's like somebody with a different accent like from a different state, like from North Carolina. They talk way different than I do. So yes. the first time you hear that, you're like, whoa. You know, it's, I mean, yeah. I think, I think um, when I was growing up, I, I know it was pretty aggressive, though. Like, you know, you wanted to, like, hit, you know, and, um, yeah, there was a lot of, it was a lot of fun, you know. I remember dancing with like Maurice Chestnut a lot, like with Deborah, and just like who knows what we were doing. We thought we were doing something, but we were just like working hard. Like I remember, just it was just a lot of energy. There was so much energy in that time, like the late '90s. I remember growing up, like New Jersey, New York. Like there was a lot of energy. It was awesome. Yeah, that was an exciting period. Sean. Oh, yeah. I love Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, nice to see you. Mm -hmm. Um, So you've worked with a few different tap companies. We talked about the New Jersey Tap Ensemble a little bit. Tell us about your time with Ensight. How did that come about? Did you did your family move to North Carolina, or did you travel back and forth? How did that happen? My dad got a job transfer. He was a civil engineer. He worked for the same company for about 48, 49 years, just retired like two years ago. But he had a job transfer to North Carolina. I was going to be a junior in high school. I was like, ah, I don't want to, you know, I was like, man, I'm right by New York. I'm like, North Carolina. I was like, you know, so we moved to Charlotte area, the Concord area close to Charlotte. And um I kept asking around, and all I kept hearing was G Medler, G Medler, G Medler, G Medler. I'm like, Mom, you got to drive me. She's like, it's a two-and-a-half-hour drive each way. I'm like, I don't care. You got to drive me, Mom. You got to drive me. So she drove me up. I auditioned. I got it. I started taking private lessons with Gene. He's the first one who really showed me what a one-and-a-half was, and that made me so frustrated because I was just like, what? Like, it was hard concept to understand. I didn't shuffle like that. It was a different flavor and it made me so um it made me just admire the art form that much more right away and he started to show show me um the walk around and he started to show me a lot of stuff and i was only there for about four maybe five months my grades started to drop a little bit to like c's because i was you know i was trying to travel to charlotte find a place to you know practice I wasn't really you know school I was still trying to be the best tap dancer I could be and I didn't have any friends in this high school yet so I was just like I don't know my grades were like C's they went from B's to C's and my mom was like well we ain't driving two and a half hours every week for that like nine no so I had to get my grades back up and um and by that time I was almost out of high school so you know but I I appreciate my time with Gene, and then I'm alumni, and every time I go back, I was supposed to be back this year, but everything got shut down. Um, I have great respect for that place and that man and um, everything that is there. So, yeah. yeah. Truly one of the nicest people in the tap world. I really, I've been oh, yeah. for a long time. Just a, what a Absolutely. kind of mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And respond, you know, and his is partially responsible for so many amazing tap dancers, right? Like he really, boy, when, no, when he, people go study with him, 
Mm. Here's another one. It's like you train like you're in college. He's like, here's here's a piece. You can go work with so and so. He put me with Jared Grimes. Like Jared Ooh. showed me a few pieces. I remember, and he he would just leave us be for like hours, and he would just, mm. and it was up to you. You know, it really was up to you. Like to, if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like brushing your teeth. Your mom's going to remind you a few times, but after a while, it's really up to you. Like you, yeah. And I, I appreciate that because I kind of teach like that, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, I don't say, you got to go home and practice this. I just, <laughs> see, I just try to see for the ones who, who just do it. And then I'm like, hey, yeah. that's what I'm talking about, you know. Right. So. Right, and that's how Gene was. Like, same with yeah. Deborah. He he wasn't mad if you didn't. It was just like, okay, well, you're not in that piece. That's okay, and yep. it was okay. But if if you put the uh, the time in, then it was it was awesome. So it was cool. I really enjoyed Love my it. time there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about the time when you and I met. Um. Mm-hmm about the time that you spent in tapestry. And, and I'm going to preface this by saying, first off, I remember the day I met you uh, mm-hmm. because I believe we had uh, an improv circle. Yep. I'm trying to think. So the year you were there, that was the year that Fayard taught yep. the... Lucky um, mm-hmm. Woo! So, mm-hmm. and for those of you that, real quick, just to give people context, one of the things that they used to do at Soul to Soul that was so cool was that if you were on faculty, there was kind of a pre-festival for maybe right. two or three days just for the faculty and the company dancers of Tapestry. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guest, kind of the master guest artist or the guest of honor would teach the rest of us. So I, I was, I remember being in a class, I think with Sarah Petronio, Brenda Buffalino. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Diane might've been there even. Yeah. I mean. It, Diane you know, you there. looked and there were like eight people in the class and you'd look right and left and these are all your heroes. Mm-hmm. And then teaching all of us is Fayard Nicholas. Um, I was just in the back trying to hide in the corner. Ooh. I was just like, I should not be in this room right now. <laughs> I was just like, I what think we is all felt happening? That way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and his wife, was it Carol? That's his wife's name? Was it? Um, Catherine. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. She yep. she she would kind of demonstrate some of the steps I remember. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That was really cool. You know. Yeah. I, I remember that that time. That was my first summer with Tapestry, living in Austin. Um, you know, trying to navigate that, and I, I remember I had a roommate, Morgan, one of my best friends. He's a ballet dancer from the Louisville Ballet, but just an awesome mm-hmm. guy. And we paid, we, we had a uh, two-bedroom apartment right near Barton Springs, right near wow. Zoker Park. Beautiful. Wow. For 600 Ooh. a month, bro. <laughs> we paid 300 each, bro. <laughs> like Amazing. It was, um, now that I think back, I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, that is amazing. So, but yeah, that was a f- um, Austin as a city is one of the best places I've ever, ever lived for sure. That's a great place. Austin's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. But so you're asking about my time with Ace, or? Yeah, we're just just dancing in a company and kind of like getting more of a concert tap dance um, mm-hmm. background, or you know, yeah. getting getting that in your in your body and your feet and kind of like because I think. You know, concert tap dance looks at tap dance in a different way, maybe in some ways, than a traditional, uh, like a vaudeville model where you're doing routine, 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 right? You have your little Mm. three-minute routine or four-minute routine. You polish that routine. You might do it for 10, 20 years. In a Mm. dance concert tap company, of course, you're learning new rep all the time. You're creating new shows all the time. Um, So I'm kind of just curious what that time was like. Yeah, like when I trained with Deborah, um, like I said, we had Leonard Oxley play every week, and he helped write mm-hmm. the music for Black and Blue. So we listened to a lot of, a lot of Duke, a lot of Count, you know, like a lot of that kind of flavor. So I was used to that kind of energy, you know, Jersey Bounce, Top Hat, White Tie and Tails, This Joint Is Jumping, Satin Da, like, I mean, 
I mean, fats, like, yeah, like, there was that kind of, I mean, it was, so I was used to that. And then my first show with Asia, like, you know, it was a, a challenge. Like, the, we brought in this amazing modern dancer, I think name is D, forget her last name, but she brought in a bucket of water. And we had to dip this towel in water and then get ourselves drenched with water and smack the towel on the ground and make rhythm. And, and I'm oh, sitting man. there, bro, and I moved my <laughs> whole life there, okay? And I'm like... <laughs> And I'm sitting there, and everybody's yelling and hooting and hollering and banging the towel, and I'm just like. But I started going. I started doing it because I knew I, you know, I needed that paycheck. So you know, I needed to. Yeah. So and AC gave me that look, like, excuse me, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I started getting it in, you know, and it was fun, you know. I did my thing. I, but uh, that was a, a a different thing, and then really learning. That was the beginning of me really learning which was finished in Imagine Tap, but that was the beginning of me really learning how to be in an ensemble and like mm -hmm. really learning how to not, not standing out is what makes the whole group look dope. And, right. and understanding that you got to be a great teammate before you should be a soloist. Like I was always, you know, Deborah did not let me solo, maybe for two bars and she'd bring me back in. She'd be like, get over it. You know, like you, not really. Like, you know what I mean? Like maybe I, you know, it, it wasn't like I had a two and a half minute solo I did every weekend. It wasn't like yeah. that. It was like, so me to be in an ensemble was really cool. Um, but AC had me doing, you know, three, three days of ballet a week. I was really being pushed outside of my comfort zone left and right, you know, and, and you know, tap dance was almost um, not an afterthought, but there was it was definitely more balanced. Now it's more of a tap. I think it's only tap now. But then it was man, it was a lot of um, a lot of other stuff. So that was an adjustment for me, for real. I I came from Deborah and then Gene and then Ace. It was awesome in its own way, but it was just an adjustment at first yeah, for sure. I mean, she had me open up a show and like long underwear and stuff i'm like like she ace <laughs> and i'm backstage the curtains closed and i look at myself i'm like you know but i love it how did your life you know, lead did you it. to that moment <laughs> right and then you're trying to be cool on stage it's like wow it, it it really pushed me as a you know just to get over myself sometimes and just be like whatever i gotta try so that was yep. cool. Um, so yeah, but that was an adjustment. Um, learning how to be in the ensemble and not standing out was a good thing for the group, you know. And I and um, that's a cool lesson to learn. I try to teach my, not my, but the kids who I teach. I try to teach that too, you know. Like, you know, my grandfather used to say, "The one who yells first in the argument l l loses." Ooh, I like you know? that. Because if you're trying to stand out, if you're trying mm. to stand out, you know what I mean? Then it's like, you, you, yeah. you're going to stand out. But like, so for the ensemble work, it's like just keeping that, finding that groove, finding and really trying to, trying to listen. You know, I think listening and hearing are two different things, you know, and if you really listen to each other as, and this is why tap dancing is amazing, like, then you can really understand like how somebody is approaching a step, you know? Um, and I found that awesome when I was in Tapestry, just learning, cause there was somebody from Canada, Chicago, Missouri, it was all over and we're trying to make a show in three months. So we had to really focus on trying to be a collective sound. So that's the first time I, I jumped into that side of things. And then mm -hmm. ACA was very, you know, sharp with, the upper body sometimes and there's a lot of arms that I wasn't used to and having to learn how to drop my shoulders which I still don't do but hmm. just working on that stuff was a challenge right. but it made me a better dancer it, it really did because it showed me that if I work hard at something I, I might not be like the best at everything but I'm gonna be okay if I put my best effort in and yeah. as long as I put my best effort I can't be 90 hmm. percent I got to be 120 I I have to be, and that's how I kind of live 
everything in my life. My relationships, I got to be all in or I'm all out. If I'm going to tap dance, I'm all in or I'm all out. Like, I, I so, but yeah. Love it. Mm. And so yeah. then, not too long after that, you were in Imagine Tap here in Chicago. I remember I saw you in it. Uh, amazing show, of course. You're not the first guest I've interviewed that was part of it. Um, and everyone I've talked to that was a part of that show talks about uh, what a life-changing experience being in that cast was. Would you talk a little bit about the time uh, in Imagine Tap? Oh, my goodness. That show... I still have cuts and bruises from being cut so many times in that show, <laughs> in those rehearsals. Like, every day was like survival of you had to make it out of rehearsal still with some kind of like, look, there was a step of the day, half the time in rehearsal, somebody would yell out, no left cramp rolls, so then the whole time you're improv and you can't do it. Like, there was so much stuff happening. That show was amazing. I mean, there, look, like, it was such a challenge. First of all, Derek's choreography is so intricate, mm -hmm. so intricate, and, and sometimes he'll he'll give it to you so nonchalant, like yeah, it's this. So you think it's not really you're like oh okay, but then you start and you're like how what is it this? And he's like yeah, yeah. Is there a problem? <laughs> like and you're like, I mean the choreography was so hard anyway. It was so beautiful, and then you have to make it look special it was this yeah. constant work it was like you achieve a goal and Derek's like here's another one and mm -hmm. it, it just really pushed everybody consistently um I can remember the first day of rehearsal well I remember getting the phone call from Derek that I was he, he I was in the show that mm -hmm. was next to proposing to my wife and getting married that was pro professionally that's probably the best phone call um yeah. I don't know, man. Yo, it, it, it was just an amazing moment. But then the first day of rehearsal, I can I never forget like um me, well, Joseph, Jared, Jumani. I think Jared was already there, Joseph was there. Me and Jumani came in cuz he was my roommate in New York. That's how we got to know each other. Um and um I walk in and all of us are just hanging out and then I think Joseph starts dancing. And I'm just like, what? Like, who is that? Like, I was like, now I'm like, I don't want to put my shoes on. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, and then Jared jumps up. And, you know, and now I'm, and I remember Jared from North Carolina, but now Jared is oh yeah, Jared. Right. So, so then he stands up and him and Joe are dancing. And now I'm looking at Jumani like, Oh my gosh. So then Jumani puts his shoes on and he starts dancing. And now I'm like, now I'm looking at Derek, like, why am I in this room right now? I'm like, so then I got to put my shoes on, I feel, right? So I put my shoes on, I start dancing. And I just never forget that moment. Um, and that was a consistent feeling for the next year of being pushed like that. Every, And we shared a room, like, at in Chicago, backstage, the four of us. And it was three boards in there it was just consistent constant let's go hit this you know like if i messed up a step i felt like i was in timeout like it was no. like that it was like and it wasn't like that but you felt like that i didn't want to let down the squad you know i didn't want to let down the squad um there was a piece called three chefs uh and i was the understudy for all of them but I, um but I got to watch them perform that every night. And that was one of the highlights ever of my career, um, seeing Joseph, Jumani, and Jared solo, like, each night in a mansion tap. That was wonderful. I was honored t to be in that show, just to be there, you know. Um, just a great show, man. Just a great experience. And then at intermission, because we're already exhausted, already sweating <laughs> through everything, and then you hurry up because then it's called stage left. And there's another cypher improv circle starting during Ooh. intermission. Wow. And the stage manager is like, guys, curtains up in two. We're like, yeah, whatever. So, and then he's like, yo, guys, <laughs> yo, curtains up in three. We're like, all right. 
And we're like, guys, your McCarran's up in tenses. Like, and then we'd finish and then run to the second act. We made that dude have stress every night, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> like, that show was so cool, man. Eight shows a week. Yeah. And we walked two miles to and from the theater to the hotel. There was no Uber, no, you know, we... Yeah. That was part of the warm up was the walk from the hotel to the theater. Um yeah. that was a great show, great experience, man. It really was. I give Derek Grant and Aaron Tolson a lot of credit for creating that show and for you know, just putting it out there. And it came back for a little bit in New York for one run. It was a different you know, a slightly different cast, but um Lee Howard, he was in Three Chefs, that's the second run. Oh nice. Yeah, it was it's a nice little, yeah. Mm. Love it. Yeah. So when did you start Hoof and Ground, and what is the guiding vision behind that festival? Well, it started off 2004. My grandpa, Janice, uh, one of my heroes, um, oh. he passed away, and um, he left me a um, small inheritance, and I wanted to use it for a low, not a low cost, but, you know, I, just a f affordable tap festival, and it was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I did it for three years, four years there with my mom. We uh, produced it together, and you know, I brought out Derek and Ace and Michelle Dorrance and Gene and um, Maurice Chestnut. We we had a, a nice few years. It was small though, and then I you know eventually ran out of funds to make it happen. I didn't have enough money to make it happen. So then in 2007, we just uh, shut it down. I kept the LLC going, you know, all these years with my mom. And then after I got married and moved here, we, my wife and I said, yeah, we should do it here. And um, we started to, we, we only advertised for about four months last year. It was in last December, but, uh, you know, it was a good first year. You know, I had out Brenda, um, Derek, Star, Sarah, Anthony, Jumani. Um, I had out Bruce Bradley. Um, That's a nice lineup. Anybody. Yeah, it was really a. It's it's That's important great. for me, as you know, because you you're a festival. Is to have that vibe, that feeling yeah. of a festival where um, I don't know, man, just a a good vibe and a good feeling and a good show and just let the magic happen with the people there. Um, <clears throat> it was a good festival for the first year. I'm, I'm working on it for next year. Um, the vision behind it though is just, uh, it's just the hard work, the focus um, and just always inclusive of of everyone just always trying to be there um you know tap dancing was there for me in a lot of ways and i owe it every chance i get to you know as long as i'm doing this to to, to be the best i can for it you know yeah so then a few years ago you created your own company commit um first off tell us about the name um, cause it, it is, it, it's written in a very specific way and I'm sure it's that way because it has meaning. Um, and then talk about the artistic vision behind the company. Well, the, well, the name is like company and then MMIT making movement in time. Um, I like that. you know, yeah. And commit is just, you know, it's, uh, I, I just, I committed like, you have to the yard, you know, you just, you got to commit to it, you know, and um, so that's kind of where it's at. And, and again, it's always the hard work and focus and the same stuff I was raised on. Um, yeah. And I was just in California then. I was in Huntington Beach for two years, spending way too much in rent, living the life. And um, I was just out there on the beach a lot and I started to create some new energy. I got in touch with my homie, younger bro, Jabu. And I'm like, you writing music?
a big fan of him, and he wrote me a few tracks. Oops. Sorry, everyone. Looks like we had just a little technical glitch. I'm sure that Jason is going to be right back. I'm adding him back to the conversation. Got it. There we go. And Lost he, you for about literally 10 seconds. Sorry, bro. And he wrote me a few uh, songs, and we started to create um, a new show, and it was You're awesome. Off. It went off. I'm back on. Okay. okay. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and that show, that company, we met uh, two days a week, Tuesday and Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. I had the early ones, and that generation, wow. they're a little bit younger than me. They, <laughs> you know, the Michelle Mays, the Sean Carelcos, the Ryan Vitells, Hannah Wilson. Hannah, you know Hannah. She didn't want to come in early. You know Hannah quite well. That she getting her to drive because they lived in the valley and they had to drive like an hour or so out to Huntington Beach to get there by eight. So she would walk in like, you know, some days they were not happy with me because they were tired. But I'm like, <laughs> look, the company's called Commit. We got to commit. This is the only time I get the studio space. We got to focus to get this work done. You know. Yes. Um. So that was that was fun. Um, but yeah, now we're just, um, I'm trying to recreate it here in Detroit, but there's always a few dancers who are always, you know, the Sean, Michelle, Ryan, Hannah, they're always going to be, um, Jabu, they're always going to be there. They're always going to be yeah. family, you know, always going to be, um, family, just like I'm sure you have in your amazing crew. Yeah, most certainly. Certainly. Yeah. So one of the things that I've been talking about for the past uh, maybe four or five weeks of my guests is the Black Lives Matter movement and specifically how tap dance intersects with it. Um, and maybe the role that tap dancers, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that we should all be doing all the things that we can do to support the movement. Um, at the same time, I think we should lean into the specific skills that we have and, and the careers that we have to do things that are, are specific. So what do you think tap dancers can do um, to help advance the movement? And then I'm, I'm specifically interested in what special obligation do white tap dancers have within tap dance? Because um, I, I certainly feel a, a specific obligation and I'm curious to, to hear you speak to that. Well, um, I think um, I think as a teacher, it's your job. It's you, you need to really learn the best you can the history of the art and really get the truth. And then when you get it, it's your job to, if you're teaching, take that seriously and teach that. Um, make sure it's taught, you know, um, I think that's very important, very important. I know for me, last year, I said it was my first year having hoofing ground, um, you know, not, not that it matters, you know, I didn't do anything I didn't feel, but the, I, you know, I contacted Adley Bradley, and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to find a venue to have my tap festival at, you know, I want to make it at a, at a place that is, you know, first of all, has amazing floors, and second of all, you know, and she she introduced me to the the Motor City Dance Factory, which is a Black-owned studio, beautiful studio, and it was an amazing place to have the Tap Festival. Um, I'm talking to people who run the Garden Theater here in Detroit. It's a family-owned, Black family-owned theater in Detroit, I'm talking with them for next year to hold the event there, the classes mm -hmm. and the show. And again, not that I'm doing anything special, but just having awareness, um, I don't know, just, I owe, I owe tap dancing everything, everything. So, um, you know, I talked to Diane this morning and, uh, you know, I love her a lot. So, you know, 
I love tap dancing so much, so how can you not support any this kind of movement and um just try to try to try to be there for everybody in any way that you can like you said you just use your skills your strengths and i feel even though it's not much you know that's what i'm trying to do uh for my festival and to you know and to include everybody you know to make sure that everybody um you know is invited and available if they can be. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. So finally, tell us about opening your own studio with your wife, Foundation House. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that experience then? I know, you know, it's funny, people often, when they hear that I run a dance company, they assume that I also run a studio. And uh -huh. I kind of always jokingly <laughs> say, oh God, no way, I'm not crazy. Um, Cause that's a lot of work. Um, so tell us about that experience and how are you finding it? Um, well, at first I told my now wife, she was then my fiance. I said, uh, part of my French, I said, hell no. I said, uh, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. What are you doing? You're crazy. I've been to enough dance studios to know that, you know, I'm not trying to say anything, but I've seen some people who own a dance studio who look like they're, they've had, Wow. It's, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> they drink a lot of coffee. They drink yeah. a lot. They, they, a lot of wine being drank. And I'm like, yo, like there's a lot of stuff happening all the time. Like their phone's ringing constantly from moms who are upset because yeah. the costume don't fit or they're in the back line or their shoes don't fit right or they want to. I'm like, wow. It's not just owning a dance studio. Like you have to run a small village. Like you got to like... It's weird in a way. So I was like, I don't know, babe. But the way she runs it, to be honest, and the way we run it is very, not, I mean, it's very professional in the sense, like like we said, it's like college. Like we give you the information. It's really up to you if you, um, if you get it. And it's in Livonia, which is like 20 minutes out from here. Livonia, Michigan. It's called the Foundation House. And that name is, you know, you, you got to have a strong foundation in anything. Mm. If you want to be a strong at tennis, you, you got to understand the basics, you know. And you got to have a solid, like this house. We redid everything in this house except the foundation because it's, it's a solid foundation. That's why we bought the house. So <clears throat> so having a strong foundation and, and it's a house, we, we want people to feel like it's a home and eventually to feel like family. You know, so that's an important um, name for us. Um, and, um, you know, you'll be teaching any any age. It's only got about mm -hmm. 45 kids, not very many. But the kids who come, they're very serious. You know, they practice, they work hard, and they respect what they do. We have a beautiful 24 by 35 foot floor, Omara floor. Mm -hmm. that woo, That's why... My wife's amazing. She invested in a beautiful floor for our studio. And then we have a smaller private lesson room with a nice wood floor that her mother helped me build. Like, she, she actually made So we're a little, right now, we're frozen for about just five seconds, but I know. Come back, I'm actually going to uh, cut this off and go to part two. We um, get restarted. So I'm going to end this. I want to thank you for joining me. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. <laughs> and artistic director of Chicago Tap Theater. Back for part two of the Tea on Tap today featuring... Jason Janis, it's been one heck of a discussion so far. I've really enjoyed getting to hear his uh, thoughts on tap dance. I know that he's been somebody I've been wanting to have as a guest for quite a while, so I'm so glad to finally have him on here. Um, just as soon as I see him back, we'll get him back on this call. I want to welcome back uh, Emily and Hannah and Christina. Thank you for joining us. Hannah, it's so good to see you on here. Um, I, I know you heard our shout-out, so... 
uh, Hannah's a dancer that danced in Chicago Tap Theater before then going on and dancing in Jay's company. And here we go. Back. Perfect. Sorry about I, that. That was perfect timing because we were just about to break. I don't you know, know what happened. Cuts you off at an hour. Okay. So I was about to cut us off and come back for the final two segments. Great. Um, so I know it was accidental, but timing wise, couldn't have been better. Hey, there you go. Right? Always have good timing. We try. So we're going to move on to the two minute tap class. You have two minutes to teach any step, concept, or idea. I will be timing you. I will not really be timing you. You can take as long as you want. And are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to head back here, throw my shoes on. I mean, Perfect. I'm, sure, I'm sure you got a million shoes. Woo! Oh, that's a nice collection of shoes there. Yeah, those are my wife's. I wouldn't Aww, look that cool in those. I don't think I look that good in those. I mean, I, well, I, I could pull I mean, it off pink. I could pull it off. I, I was going to say, I'd kind of like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why. Isn't it silly that a color is like, like gender? Like, yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> so silly. Like, it, like it makes me think. Like, okay, flowers. Like, a lot of those are pink. Those are dope. I'm like, I don't even understand. Yeah. Like, all right, I got four cats. Did you know that? Four. No. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of cats. Yeah. Uh, Fred, Fred Astaire, Greg, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., and Gregory Hines. They were named like the first names were already named. That was the rule. I told my wife, but, you know. And then we found one. Her name is, and she's a tiny little cat. And we named her Mabel after Mabel Lee. Like, oh, yeah. She's adorable. Okay. So All right. here we go. Take it away. All right. So just like as you learn single, double, triple, just like your time steps, right? <clears throat> okay. So, so let's say single, double, triple, switch. Single, double, triple, switch. Single, double, triple, switch. Single, double. Now, keep in mind, when you flap, you transfer the weight. When you shuffle, you don't, right? Okay, now, put that two-point crawl in between each one. So now, can you see my feet? Okay. So, I can. Okay, so now it goes single, right? So single. Now pick that foot up again. Now double and then triple, right? So go single, double, triple, left. Single, double, triple. And you can mix and match. You can go double, triple, single, right? You can say triple. And then you can try, try like a, because that was a pull crawl. You can try like a push crawl, right? So we could say like a single, double, triple. So then you can like go this way, this way, right? So so I like that. I like saying like single, double, triple, then double, single, then triple. You can mix them all up, and that's kind of an idea. Just a little. Oh, that's beautiful. Little tool. What? Well, yeah, you know. This little tool. I man. love it. I didn't, That's you know, awesome. I, it's like a language. I did not invent any word, you know, and like, <laughs> like you can't walk around saying things like snarf lark. No one's going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> so you just got to say what you know, I guess. But uh, yeah, man. But, um, but yeah, but like trying to get back to, you know, I just think it's up to, I don't know. I just think it's up to us to really be the best we can for who we are. I agree with you, man. And um, I don't know. I appreciate I what you're you. doing, dude. Oh, I pre man, Thanks. Thank you. I Thanks for you know that. I know it was quick. You know that I'm a huge fan of yours. You know. Uh... Well, man, I mean, just to hear you say things, I'm like, wow, you know, because I'm sure all of us are harder on ourselves as artists, you know, so. So I look at myself as like, man, I got to, that, that's what, that's why I practice so, so much, man. I don't, you know, I, I want to dance like the ones, like I want to dance like y'all. I want to dance like Jumani and Derek and Chris, mm -hmm. you know, and my, my, you know, my bros and Jason and, you know, like I want to dance like John Bubbles. I want to dance like, 
you know, Chuck. I want to dance like them. And, 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 like, you know, and that's what makes me try to work hard every day is just realizing that no matter how much I think I've worked, there's still so far to go. And that's fun. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when the movie's over. Yeah. You know, you want to keep, you want to keep, keep, keep on going. So, you know, I just, I appreciate this art form so much, man. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for a rapid rest? Yeah, let's do it. What's up, Bob? Ten, so 12 questions. They're going to go by fast. Are you ready? Yes. All right. One, what tap shoes do you wear? Capizio K360s. Two, taps, tight or just a little bit loose? Tight. Three, favorite song to tap dance to? You get one song. Lullaby Birdland. Ooh, nice choice. Uh, four, favorite composer? Thelonious Monk. Mm. Five, you're in 4-4 four, four time. Do you count in fours or in eights? Four. Eight. Five, uh, six, favorite tap dancer to watch who is no longer with us? John Bubbles. Seven, favorite living tap dancer to watch? Derek Grant. Mm. Eight, favorite choreographed tap piece that you've ever seen or done? 53. Nine, what single tap performance that you've seen do you remember the most vividly? Jason Samuels and Sam Weber performing at the Joyce Theater, mm. Condos Brothers. Oh, the I would have loved that. I've heard about that. I've talked to Sam about the experience of creating it. I would have killed it. I've not seen it. I would kill to see that. Remember, I was in the um, audience. I was sitting there, me and Matthew Shields, Matty Shields, <laughs> back in the day. Nice. That's awesome. Um, you can go back in time and see any one tap performer or performance, what do you see? Ooh, um, great feats of feet, that whole documentary, hanging out with like, you know, Bubba and Buster and Honey and whew. Yeah. Wow. This is a new question. You're only the second person to answer it. What tap dance would you most like to see added to the tap canon? What does that mean, tap cannon? Like what? So, uh, so all the dances that we kind of all know, Laura oh, okay. and Opus One and BS mm. Chorus. What what piece of choreography would you like to see added to that that becomes something we all learn at a certain point in our career? I really like doing Sarah Petronio's uh, Joy Spring. Joy Spring is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's a great choice. Mm -hmm. um, finally, second step of the Shim Sham. What count do you start on? Four. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. So before our final question, I just need to thank a few people. I want to thank Leah, our marketing director, and the tech guru for Chicago Tap Theater. She's been helping so much making all this happen. I want to thank our amazing staff, Molly, Ali, Sarah, our interns, Ali and Emily. Um, I want to thank the awesome dancers of Chicago Tap Theater. We actually got to rehearse yesterday in person um, wearing masks. Wow, that's hard. crazy. Yeah. We only How's it have like in a mask? Dancers. Is it weird? I know. It was weird yeah, dancing it's really, in a mask? It's weird dancing in a mask. And the air conditioner was not working. And it was 90 degrees. Uh, oh, so it was rough. Uh, but, you know, we were so happy to be together in a room. It didn't matter. I know. Um, it's true. And it's worth noting, we had no more than four people at a time rehearsing. So we couldn't all rehearse together because um, safety first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, we'll be doing this next year. Right. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, my set dresser, producer, and the business manager of Chicago Tap Theater, my beautiful wife, Jennifer Yonley. Yes. Um, I want to remind everybody out there that Chicago Tap Theater has company classes every Wednesday from 5 to 6 and an intermediate class from 6 to 7. Uh, we do have a show coming up, the reason we're rehearsing. We are doing a live online remote show July 26th. That will be on Vimeo Live. We'll have more details as we get there. I want to remind you all that Heather Cornell has her amazing program, Conversations with Heather Cornell, The Masters, Manhattan Tap, and Making Music Dance. That will be back on July 12th, Instagram Live at 11 a.m. Central, and then join us for Tea on Tap at noon. Then go back to Zoom at 1.30 for footage and discussion with Heather Cornell. If you're a fan of tap history, you owe it to yourself to check this out. 
Um, Heather was there to see a lot of this history, and she created a lot of it. So don't miss out on that. More information, manhattantap.org backslash Heather Cornell tap dance. Finally, um, book club will not be happening this Friday. It's July 3rd. Um, we'll have information soon coming out about our book club. I want to thank you, Jason, one more time for joining us. Before I ask the last question, I just want to um, personally comment on uh, how much I've appreciated knowing you for two decades now. Yes, um, I, I really appreciate our friendship. I really do yeah. admire you as an artist. You are one of those people that anytime you dance, I will stop and watch. Yeah, if I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see a video of you up there, that's an automatic stop because I want to see whatever it is you're doing because I know it's going to be beautiful. Well, thank um, you. That so means a lot, man. The I also want to say that well, thank you. That's kind of you. I also want to say you started this interview by kind of deflecting and saying that you're not good at, at speaking or whatever. Um, honestly, if this is the 21st interview we've done. I thought a lot of your answers were quite eloquent. And I really, you, you said some things that I will remember and pass on to others. So um, I would Thanks, just man. say that I think you, you speak as well with your mouth as you do with your feet, uh, ah. which is high praise. Thanks, um, man. I so, appreciate it. You know. Growing I mean, up in Jersey, I'm lucky I don't swear more. My mom <laughs> used to. I, I got in school. I was saying F words like they were nothing. I'm like, oh, I can't say that here? I'm like, oh, my fault. <laughs> my mom walks in, what the F are you doing? I'm like, see? See where I get it from? <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, my mother-in-law is from Queens. <laughs> hey. hey. Yeah. I'm not saying she swears a lot, but she definitely has the accent. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, final shuffle. Okay. When you shuffle off this mortal coil, how would you most like to be remembered as a tap artist? Just somebody who uh, took it serious, went to work every day, respected those who came before, appreciate what he was given, and never forget where he came from um, and try to pass on what he was he was given. Um, I look at tap dancing like a flower. You got to water it. You can't pluck it. You, you got to keep on trying to be the best you. And I just, you know, I'm very fortunate, very lucky. Um, I've been a guest in a lot of people's homes through through tap dancing. And even as a tap dancer, I'm very fortunate to be involved in this family and in this, in this art form. And I feel very fortunate. And, um, I I love it very much. I love it. There's no doubt that that people will say all those things and more. Jason, thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank sir. you all out there for joining us. Um, Jason, you and I will continue this conversation someday soon. Great. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank Bye, you so guys. much. Thank you.